Welcome to Tales from the Enchanted Forest, where we bring you fairy tales, folklore, myths, and legends from all over. I am Sparrow, and I will be your host for today. This week, Fox is traveling beyond the Enchanted Forest, aiding an exiled prince who is on a quest to reclaim his throne. This means that today is another edition of Sparrow's Short Solo Show. Today's story comes to us from a 1922 book, which is simply titled Canadian Fairy Tales. It was written by Professor Cyrus McMillan, who collected these tales from various First Nation groups and others across Canada. Sadly, he didn't know where each story originated, making it quite difficult to track, though the story does talk about the Magdalene Islands on the East Coast. While the islands are technically a part of the Quebec province, it is much closer to the Maritime provinces so we can hypothesize the story originated closer to the East Coast. We can speculate all day long, but time is growing short, so let's dive into the waters of the story together. So listen closely as I tell today's tale, The Mermaid of the Magdalens. Off the East Coast of Canada, there was a rugged, barren group of islands called the Magdalens. It was a very inhospitable place where plants struggled to take root, and wild storms often raged against the bleak rocks. Despite all of this, birds of all kinds flocked to the islands. They were often seen flying circles above the islands, and there were so many that their collective cries could be heard even in a thunderstorm. Because of this, one of the islands earned the name Isle of Birds from a group of settlers who once landed there hundreds of years ago. So the question becomes, if there is next to no vegetation on these islands, why would birds flock to them? If I were playing The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom right now, the answer would be that there was treasure or something else important there. And some other folklore would have all sorts of weird, fantastical reasons why these islands were popular with the birds. But the story's answer actually makes quite a lot of sense. See, the waters surrounding the islands are chock full of fish, so the birds flock there to hunt for food. The area was so plentiful of fish that men referred to the area as the Kingdom of Fish. Now, I know you didn't come here just to learn about this barren rock with lots of birds above and many fish in the nearby waters. Our story begins long ago when people began to preserve fish in cans. The canned sardines were shipped all over and they became quite popular. So sellers were able to charge higher prices for the fish and made lots of money. Soon enough, greedy traders started overfishing in an attempt to make more and more money. Slowly, the fish population became smaller and smaller, for the poor tiny fish had no way to defend themselves. In their despair, they asked the big fish if they could help them in their dire situation. The big fish felt they couldn't ignore this plight, so they called a meeting of all the fish in the sea. (laughs) I cannot imagine having to coordinate a meeting like that. I can barely get three people to agree on a time for a work meeting. And even if everyone agrees, someone still flakes at the last minute. But I digress. So the meeting is called to order, and after much discussion, the big fish take an oath to aid the little fish in their struggle with the humans. And when possible, they would punish those humans who fished or ate any of those from the sardine family. This pleased the little fish, and they rejoiced. Flashing forward to May Day, a merchant ship filled with cans of sardines became wrecked on the sunken rocks of the Magdalene Islands. Soon the water washed some of the cargo ashore, littering the beach with packaged fish. That very evening, a fair maiden who lived on this island with her fish trader father was walking along the beach when she saw the canned fish just sitting there. She became very excited because, remember, Canned sardines were very popular at this time. I know that might not be the case today, but it's not that there were many snack or fast food options readily available during that time. So she decided that she would eat and enjoy these free sardines. But try as she may, she could not open the box. So instead of going home to look for tools to help her open up the box, she did the next best thing and sang about her problems. And asking for all who hear her lament, to help her open the box for her. She sang, I love sardines when they're boiled with beans and mixed with the sands of the sea. Not exactly the most appealing meal I've ever heard, but you know, you do you, girl. Judgment on food taste aside, a nearby skatefish heard her lament and swam to shore. 
Once he listened to the whole song and understood her request, he felt disgusted by her, for he was cousins with the sardines. However, he felt too timid to try and punish the maiden, so he quickly swam away. Soon after, a bold merman who had long searched for a shore wife swam by and heard her song. At last, he thought, here is the shore maiden for me, for the voice of the singer was very beautiful to him. So he hastened to his home to dress himself with something that was both sharp and sophisticated. Using bright, clean seaweeds and sea leaves, he quickly made himself a new suit, all green and yellow. He covered his feet with bright colored shells and his neck with the pearls that an oyster gave him. After carefully getting dressed, he quickly returned to where he had heard the song. But when he got close enough to her and heard what she was singing about, he froze. He remembered the oath he had made at the gathering of fish, and even though he loved her, he would not break his oath. But he also couldn't bring himself to punish her. So, just like the skate fish, the merman swam away. The evening was going on, the moon was almost high in the sky, and the maiden was now tired and distressed. She still could not get the box open, so she began banging against a large rock sitting in the sea. As it happens, under that rock, a large black lobster was resting after a long battle with an enemy. The continuous tapping against the rock woke the lobster, who groggily listened to the maiden's song. Oh, I love sardines when they're boiled with beans and mixed the sands of the sea. I am dying for some. Will nobody come and open this box for me? The lobster remembered his oath to the little fish, and unlike the skate fish and the merman, he was not afraid of the maiden, for he knew his own power. He crept out of his hiding place and gave a friendly wave to the maiden as he approached. Fair lady, he said, I can open the box for you. Give it to me and I'll have it open in no time. But when she held out the box to him, the lobster clamped down on her wrist with his mighty claw. Before she could even scream, the lobster dragged her far out into the sea. No one knows for sure what the lobster did to the maiden next. Some say he sold her off to the merman who was looking for a shore wife and that she is still slowly changing into a fish today. But one thing is certain, she never came back to land. But they say that on the 1st of May, she can be seen on the waters near the island she once lived on. She carries a small mirror in her hand that she uses to see if she has become more of a fish since the previous May Day. And sometimes on moonlit nights, in May, the fishermen can hear her strange, sad song dancing across the waters. They know she is lonely, and if they sail on these nights, she will seize them and drag them down into the sea to keep her company. And that is The Mermaid of the Magdalens. It's a pretty classic mermaid-type story. It also weirdly heavily features canned fish, which kind of feels more modern for folklore. Which kind of tracks since the first can of sardines was packaged in 1834. But enough of what I think. We want to hear what you think of today's tale. You can message us on Twitter at From Enchanted or email us at talesfromenchantedforest.com. Or if you want to see the show notes on this or any previous episode, please check out our website at www.talesfromenchantedforest.com. Thank you so much for joining me this week, dear travelers. Fox will be back next week with another exciting solo story. And the following episode after that, we will be back together for our regular episodes. So until then, remember, there's always a place for you in the Enchanted Forest. <laughs>